Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE on the ground. Covering KubeCon 2016. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, we're here at KubeCon and the Cloud Native Con. This is the conference that's just come out of nowhere, one year old, and we have the found, one of the founders of KubeCon here, JJ, Joseph Jack, Senior Director of Product Management, Apprenda, and Rakesh Malhotra, who's the Senior Vice President of Products and Engineering, Apendra. You guys worked each other through an acquisition. You guys, you got JJ on your team, Pete Sonsini's on your board, I've met Sinclair, all of the guys there. You got a great company. Thanks, yeah. And you got a great talent in JJ here, Joseph Jass, AKA JJ. Um, <laughs> who I remember two years ago at, at OpenStack, we were talking about Kubernetes. Yeah. We were at, having a cocktail, I think it was on the, uh, the needle, sky, sky Needle yeah. up here in Seattle, and mm -hmm. we were riffing on some of the orchestration challenges around OpenStack, and, and you start to see the dots connect, and Kubernetes was coming out of the woodwork, but now it's like, it's everywhere. This event here is sold out, it's jam-packed. You started a year ago, small little conference. How many people were there a year ago? We had like 560 or so people in the first event. We had, we, that actually exceeded our expectations. We thought it was going to be a big meetup and ended up actually being a real conference with like major industry sponsors and kind of took us by surprise. But yeah, this, this is yeah. A, a real big movement. It's just explosion on the scene, like a flash mob, a little gravity. Yep. Now it's kind of turning into the Milky Way of software developers, got this gravity and all the stars are here to use that metaphor. But now the Linux Foundation and now a foundation, the CNCF, which stands for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. The Cloud Native Computing it's Foundation. We have to get it a little closer. It's a tongue twister. I keep on thinking IETF, but that's just you know me, old school. Um, but congratulations. We're going to talk about that in, in our next uh, next segment about the community impact. But props to you. Congratulations. Sure. Yeah. Apprenda gets a, get a lot of value. So, guys, Apprenda. What last update I talked to Sinclair. I think it was VMworld, but uh, at an NEA event. Yep. Uh, which is one of your funders. Um, business is going good. Yeah. Things are great. Things Give us great. the update. And what's the where do you guys fitting in with the Kubernetes product? What's the update for customers? Yeah, you know, we've been uh, working with enterprise customers for a while, helping them build and deploy applications. And uh, about eight months ago, we decided to go head first into Kubernetes. Just saw a lot of great organic traction, as you were describing. And, um, and we made a pile of investments. And this conference has been great because we've been able to unveil a bunch of cool technology we've been working on. Um, some upstream OSS stuff we're building around Windows, which is a huge gap for customers. People want to see Kubernetes on Windows as well as Linux. Um, the Kubernetes Enterprise Toolkit. So customers who are trying to get Kubernetes up and running behind their firewall in the enterprise, giving them tools to make that easy, to demystify some of the tech. We're all yeah. kind of propeller heads around here who love working with the tech and, and love really getting your hands dirty, but customers want to get business problems solved, and that's really what the uh, Kubernetes Enterprise Toolkit is Yeah, and, then, and Kismatic, which you guys kind of tucked under, took under your wing. That's uh, right. Some expertise there. But did you see the explosion of this growth? I mean, I'm, it's, it brings together, it seems like timing's everything. The, the stars are lined up, and I just haven't seen this kind of energy at an event in a long, long time, because it's got a, an extra entrepreneurial flair to it. You can feel, and I don't mean like startups happening, there's some startups here, certainly, but it's entrepreneurial in the inventiveness. The, the people here are, are not just developers, there's an inventive vibe. Like, let's go knock down some problems, let's take that hill. You know what I'm saying? It's, like it's got yeah. that vibe going on. Your thoughts on the on, on the show? Yeah, that. I think a big part of it is we see a lot of customers that we're working with trying to transform their businesses, and Kubernetes is a tool to help them do that. So it's not just about Kubernetes for the sake of Kubernetes or for the sake of container orchestration, it's about, hey, we want to be a software company. You know, whatever business, aerospace, banking, financial service, whatever it happens to be, they transform into a uh, so software and services company, they need a technology foundation that'll work for them. And so we're seeing lots of great organic, not just intent, but interest um, in this stuff. And literally, you know, walking the show floor, it's literally shoulder to shoulder out there. What are you guys so, demoing with Apprenda here today? What's the what's the big uh, showing for you guys? Well, there's a Kismatic Enterprise Toolkit, which we uh, which we demoed today and announced um, that I described mm -hmm. earlier, and that helps customers deploy and get clusters up and running, helps them manage and operate this in an enterprise context. Um, we also demoed our support that we're actually including in Kubernetes 1.5 for Windows, which we've been working with uh, Microsoft on and Google as well. Um, so we showed that off, a lot of people excited about that. Um, and then last thing, we've been really active in working on the UX and the dashboard. So while everyone loves CLIs and APIs, um, again, to make this technology approachable to the uh, enterprise customer, making this easy to digest and visualize, we've been investing a lot there as well. So we And a new logo too, you got a new logo. Yes, new logo, so got, new swag. I got a shirt, yeah. so appreciate it. Um, for the folks out there, get the quick plug and then we can move on to the innovation topic. What, what is the core problem that 
that you guys solve for customers? What what would you say to folks out there? Our, yeah, our core problem is to help customers build applications and run applications in a uh, strategic and more um, efficient manner. So as customers build applications and software to run their company, we want to be the platform and we're helping customers realize that So new, for their software development platform. That's right. So if you're, uh, you know, I've spent 10 years at Microsoft before uh, Apprenda, and uh, we used to be fond of saying in Pacific Northwest, we weren't even the biggest software shop in Pacific Northwest. There's a large airline company that had more developers than Microsoft for many years. Yeah. So they're Writing COBOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, Older guys. Yeah, and they're moving yeah. forward too, and all yeah. those folks yeah. are now, you know, yeah. they need to be more modern and, and more nimble, and so we're at, we really help those enterprise application developers build modern software that helps their businesses generate more revenue, be more efficient. That's yeah. really what That's our purpose awesome. is. Josh, I want to get your take on that. We have this sea change, so you guys are well positioned. I'm certainly it's cloud native, really speaks to beyond Kubernetes. Um, what are the drivers and what are the inhibitors right now for operationalizing the greatness of what containers have shown and the, you're seeing some of the benefits of, of Kubernetes because you're seeing benefits now in your cloud, cross clouds, kind of takes the pressure off some of the platform as a service baggage or inertia or pain, how we want to look at it. The world's changing pretty quickly, you're seeing the industry starting to settle in on their swim lanes, whatever the metaphor you want to use. What's your thoughts on this, guys? If you could comment on, because the innovation's coming now. What are the drivers, what are the inhibitors for enterprises to adopt this stuff? Yeah, I've, I've been thinking a lot about the drivers. I think many of the drivers are related to how the world is evolving just generally. So I think there's a lot of like really big macro trends that are starting to become really relevant for enterprise customers and just the sort of the industry overall. Um, I think the the sort of the core underlying driver is just the rise of usage of the internet. Frankly, it sounds kind of like a, a, a trite thing to mention. It's sort of like an obvious like the there's, web. There's, Mobile. there's saturation wow. <laughs> of internet services and APIs and applications that are being used by by developed countries, and underdeveloped countries, and this proliferation of the ease of access to um, like real time services, you know, broadcasted over BGP over the internet. Um, ha has has hit a level of maturation and I think saturation that um, is now seeping into the way we we design and build our systems just generally. So I think some of the way to unpack that and, and kind of think about it in the enterprise context for software development yeah. is distributed systems. I think is is becoming a really important part of how people think about writing and building next generation applications. And Apprend has been innovating and in, in pioneering this approach for sort of simplifying distributed systems you know, primitives for enterprise customers for a decade. Um, what, what Kubernetes kind of does is it emulates yeah. the sort of distributed systems patterns of the internet and it lets an application developer write a piece of software, put it in a container, run it on a system that gives them a lot of these really hard, so sort of previously hard to harness and use distributed systems primitives that again resemble like when you run something on the internet, it needs to be highly available, it needs to be resilient to failure, it needs to be deployed in multiple locations, it needs to be kind of inherently peer to peer, it needs to have some some sense of a distributed services architecture, whether you call it microservices or something else. So I think that's kind of the the core underlying trend is people want to, em so the, emu the emulation inside of the design of the internet is starting to creep into the SDLC. So that's where we're seeing all these movements from monolithic to distributed Well, not services. only leaking into the software, the, the life cycle, but changing. Like yeah, for instance, in you're way. seeing cloud change the critical infrastructure. I mean, you go back to the Microsoft yep. days. I remember when I was eight years old programming on my IBM, they had SNA architecture. It was proprietary, the full stack was proprietary yep. from all the way down to the physical layer up to the, to the top, yep. and then it, standardized at the lower end of the stack, physical and network, and then obviously TCP IP as you live in the old OSI model. Now it's the complete opposite. The apps are standardizing, forcing change down the stack yep. in real time, yep. which impacts the internet, which it turns into impacting customers' critical infrastructure. T -T -TCP I mean, this is mind blowing the, if you think about yeah. it. So what's that mean? Yeah, the, pro the protocols, the, so the, the analogy works really well, I think. Um, you know, we had we had a, a standard you know, set of protocols for people to communicate and, and emit packages and, and distribute them over you know, distributed networks. And so UDP, TCP, IP had sort of allowed that to happen for you know, large scale adoption of the internet. I think the same types of patterns are, are now um, starting to take hold in a really serious way for, for how people build distributed systems. 
and distributed systems as like a first class concern for application development is now a mainstream conversation. People are now moving beyond the sort of appreciation of, of why that's important to now how do we use and adopt technology that gives us the first principles way of looking at distributed systems and bringing that into our organization. So I think the, the adoption of Kubernetes is, 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 is an, a proof point of that. Um, I think it's happened yeah. at a really important time and a, and a, a, a critical point in history where it's, it's starting to kind and, of And, and there's so much more impact, and Rakesh, you run the engineering over there, products, operations. You're with customers, I mean, you agree with what we're talking about. This is a sea change. Yeah, ab absolutely. In, in, in if, if anything, you talked about the inhibitor. I think one of the, one of the key questions I get from customers all the time is, I know where I want to be, but here's where I am. Yeah, from so how do I here, get there? Here to there. So there's no controversy on where they're going. There's no playbook either. It's happening in real time. That's why right. communities are critical. We talk about the ecosystem. This right. is interesting about why this uh, this event has got my interest, because there's some real players here. I mean, it's not there's no pretenders coming to this event, which is I find pretty interesting because yeah, and and yeah. it's being driven by again real customer, not just interest but intent. You know, yeah. we work with customers who are running Kubernetes in production and have been for many months. Who are making big bets on the tech, betting their business and revenue on the tech. Um, and so, uh, again, for us, it's really about mainstreaming this technology, bringing it to a larger swath of enterprises, taking the complexity out of the technology. It's overwhelming sometimes for customers. We love this stuff, we eat and breathe it, but when you go to the customer and say, here's all the 40 or 50 things that are happening in the Kubernetes community, they're, they're just overwhelmed. Um, and they don't know where to start. And so for us, it's about here's where you start. Well, they start by watching the cube, of course. We have all the, <laughs> the guests and the star power. Uh, and I appreciate you, congratulations for coming here, and it's great to see you here at the event. And you get certain great backers with NEA and Pete Sonsini, and a great track record of years and years in the business. So thanks for having congratulations. us. Congratulations, great yeah, to see you guys here. Congratulations on the, on, on the great successful event sure. that you started, was we're a key part of starting. Okay, this is theCUBE here at uh, KubeCon, not to be confused with theCUBE, that's K-U-B-E, as in Kubernetes, not Cube as in C U B like what we do. And also Cloud Native Con. Thanks for watching. I'm John Furrier.